News Chopper 4 Alpha. Um, over businesses in East LA right now, this new stay at home order takes effect in LA County tomorrow night. Uh, how will it be enforced? A lot of people wondering that. Sheriff Alex Villanueva joins us on the phone with more on that. Sheriff, what are your plans at this point for enforcement? Well, first of all, we're all in this together. What we're looking for is voluntary compliance. We're not going to go into a curfew soon as we saw in the past with civil unrest. We're looking for voluntary compliance. We're looking for businesses in particular to comply with this. So if you're not a sense of business, no gatherings after 10 p.m. 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., that's the, the state uh, order. And I think if we follow that, we're going to have a chance to flatten this curve and, and get it uh, lowered because right now we're spiraling out of control. Sheriff, you're relying on a partnership with the public when it comes to compliance. However, if a person calls because of a large party, a large gathering, bottom line, will deputies respond or will they not respond? Deputies will respond and they're going to see who the, the owner of the property is. And they're going to ask for the voluntary compliance. If they don't get that voluntary compliance, well, they can up the ante there and they might issue a citation. They might take a criminal report for violation of the public health order and they'll defer the matter to the Department of Public Health for potential prosecution. But we expect to have that vol voluntary compliance from the start. Uh, Sheriff, you mentioned upping the ante here. What are the penalties uh, for noncompliance on this? Well, the penalties for noncompliance, are, they're civil, and they can range from a fine, uh, you know, a few hundred dollars up to $1,000, a potential of up to six months in jail, for violating the misdemeanor on the health order, but we don't want to ever get to that point. And uh, we've experienced this in the past, and I think when people see that uh, this is real, the threat is real, it's not going to go away because we wish it away. It's because we work together towards a common goal of flattening the curve. Well, uh, uh, Vienna Weaver, Mr. Uh, Sheriff here, with the duties that sheriff's deputies already have, uh, do you have the manpower to, to respond to these types of calls? Well, well, typically we have we have the manpower manpower to respond, and like when we have large uh, uh, private parties or or pay parties, for example, that generate a lot of calls from the community, we do respond to those, and we do attempt to uh, de-escalate those and, and and break them up while we can. We get the voluntary compliance there. Now it just gives us another tool in the bag to be able to employ. And again, we're seeking voluntary compliance. Sheriff, what does COVID look like in your department right now? How many deputies or, or people within the L.A. County Sheriff's Department are out because of COVID? Well, right now I have roughly 5% of my workforce, about 880 employees who are on quarantine. So the threat is real. And just because of the pandemic is there doesn't mean people stop calling 911. So I have deputies working in the jails, working in the field. We're constantly going into the unknown and exposing themselves potentially to this. So it's a real threat for us, and we've been able to manage it so far, but we can see an uptick now. It's, it was under, uh, under 800 for over two months. Now we're, now we're approaching the 900 mark in quarantine employees. So this is a real threat for everyone. So you're seeing the surge within your department as well. So if you look back on, let's say, March or April of this year when we had the stay-at-home orders, how is this different? Well, this is uh, not as extreme as that. I think it's a little bit more surgical. It allows for the non-essential businesses to continue. It's just from the hours of five, uh, 10 p.m. to 5 in the morning, a restriction on those, and non-essential travel. I think that is also another recommendation that, uh, people need to realize, let's, uh, let's work on staying locally. The Thanksgiving gatherings, for example, make sure it's 15 or less, no more than three households outdoors. All these things, if we follow these steps, we can minimize the impact that was going to drive up the, the rate of growth of the COVID-19. All right, before we let you go, what's the message for anyone and everyone watching? What should they be aware of? One, they need to have the mask. If you're outdoors, make sure you have that mask on. If you can uh, uh, practice social distancing, make sure the mask is on and avoid those situations that's going to put you in a large crowd anywhere. Really, those are those are key aspects. And you also got to respect the vulnerable population you may have at home. A lot of our, our young generation are thinking that, oh, it's not going to affect me. 